Hundreds of thousands of people have taken to the streets in Germany. It's the largest social movement in the country in decades. In cities, towns, large and small, protesters have been demonstrating against the far right to advocate for an open society and to protect their democracy. And yet supporters of Germany's biggest far right party seem undaunted, with more people than ever joining the organization. How dangerous is the AFD? What is causing such anger within men's mainstream society? And how resilient is Germany's democracy. On To The Point, we ask defiance in Germany. Can mass protests stop the far right? Welcome to this week's To The Point. I'm Javier Arguedas and I'm joined by today's guests. Brandon Bourne is a member of the Bettelsmann Foundation and it's Europe's future program. He focuses on US, German and transatlantic relations. Nina Hase is DW's chief political correspondent based here in Berlin. And Katja Hoya is a researcher at the King's College in London and author of the best-selling book Beyond the Wall about the former German Democratic Republic joining us from London. To all of you, welcome and thank you for being here. You know, it's been a long time since Germany has made such international headlines with uh, mass protests. What sentiment is uniting all these people? Well, there is a sentiment that there is something at stake here, and that is the foundation of democracy. So um, we've seen this building up for the last couple of years. You know, in, traditionally in Germany, protests were sort of left wing. And then with the migration crisis in 2015, they became more of a conservative right wing um, event as well. And now we're seeing the rise of the far right AFD party that's appealing to voters um, for various reasons that I'm sure we, we'll get into. And and the party itself has radicalized. So it started off as a different party than it is now with a, a, an anti-immigration sentiment, with a sentiment um, that fundamentally things need to change here in Germany. And that is something that is shocking many people. And so they're taking to the streets and they're taking to the streets in numbers that we really haven't seen since the protest movements in the GDR in the 1980s that eventually led to the fall of the Berlin Wall. Now, we have to talk about who is actually going to these protests. Katya, Germans don't really have a tradition of going on demonstrations, at least not in smaller cities and towns like people in other countries. How diverse is the crowd that is going to these protests? I think it's been really quite amazing to see um, that it is such a broad spectrum. You've got old people, young people there, people bring their children. Um, you've got people there with um, a migration background themselves who are worried about what might happen to them, but also obviously lots and lots of uh, sort of Germans who've lived in this country for generations who also don't want to live in a society as um, envisioned by by some members of the AFD, according to the to the recent revelations. So it's really been quite a broad mix of of people out there. I think that's part of the worry as well is you know how long can this be sustained when uh, politically and, and age wise and otherwise this is such a such a diverse group. Now, they say there's nothing new under the sun, Brandon. Uh, is Germany just catching up on other countries that have seen similar movements? Well, when you look at Germany, of course, um, we see this massive protest movement going on at the moment. We've, we're also seeing some protests pop up in Austria in, re in relation to these revelations that we'll talk about in a little bit. But Germany is not an isolated case. Of course, we've seen the rise of the far right across Europe. In fact, of 15 of the 27 EU member states, we see 20% support for far right parties in those countries. I think the major difference we see the AFD in relation to other far right parties in Europe is these new revelations, again, we'll talk about it in a moment, but um, they, they appear to have been uh, a bridge too far for some parties. If you look at Marine Le Pen's National Rally, for example, a party that is gaining ground in France ahead of the major elections that we have this year, uh, it has distanced itself from the AFD, and I think that's, uh, that's, that's a major sign. Definitely is. We will talk indeed about those revelations. Let's have a closer look at the immediate cause of these protests that took Germans by surprise. Germany early 2024. Hundreds of thousands of protesters take to the streets of Hamburg, along with other German cities, big and small. People of all ages are demonstrating against right-wing extremism and the AFD. They're concerned that the right wing is undermining democracy, 
united by the fear that Nazis could rise to power once again. We have to defend democracy, and that takes a lot of people. What has come out already is very, very hateful. In November 2023, the media outlet Korrektiv conducted an investigation. Undercover reporters infiltrated a secret meeting that took place at this hotel near Potsdam. The attendees were neo-Nazis, AFD politicians, super right-wing members of the CDU, and entrepreneurs. The topic? To discuss a master plan presented by the Austrian extremist Martin Selner, leader of the far-right identitarian movement. His plan, called Remigration, would see millions of people expelled from Germany, including asylum seekers, foreigners on a valid residency permit, and even German citizens with a non-German ethnic background. Now, people across Germany are demonstrating in mass to protect their democracy. But how strong is mainstream society against the far right? That's a question we are trying to answer these days. Katja, there's always been movements and protests against the far right here in Germany, but it's always been more of a niche, if you will. Do you see that changing? Well, I think the key difference here is that um, it's, it's those recent revelations that have really shown people who is actually in the AFD, what, what some of their uh, more extreme wings are actually thinking in terms of what they're going to do when they come into, into power. And I think previously people had kind of almost got used to the AFD as as part of the political spectrum, as, as kind of a party that has become... Um, normalized in lots of ways and people you know regretted that that is the case but there wasn't like a single factor or or something that sparked kind of outrage as, as one immediate thing that brings everyone out onto the streets at the same time and I think these revelations have done uh, just that and that's that's I think what's made the difference what sparked these um, at these uh, demonstrations that we're seeing at the moment. Some people say that Germans, in a way, woke up. Brandon, they are now taking to the streets to defend their democracy, but also from an international perspective, is there actual reason to believe that the German democracy is endangered by groups and by revelations like these? Well, I think something to consider is, you know, again, taking the, the international lens um, of this issue, uh, what we see is, on the global stage, democracy is actually in decline. Uh, with the Bertelsmann Transformation Index, it polls 137 countries, and over the past two years, we've actually seen a decline of democracies on the international stage. More countries became democracies over the last two years, uh, became autocracies over the last two years than democracies. So, you know, if you look at the case of the AFD, for example, um, there is a major threat of this party ahead of major elections, whether you look to the European elections this summer, the several state elections that we have later in the year, um, there is a major threat of an anti-democratic party entering institutions that could, could weaken it. And however, this is really nothing that new, Nina. There had been many warnings about extremists and movements in Germany that uh, were also a threat to the Germans' safety. Why do you think it took this particular scandal to take people to the streets? I think because people are realizing that there is a real chance that the AFD is now so big that they will enter. And, you know, there's a famous saying that goes, uh, Democrats have to win every election, every four years, every five years, depending on which country you're in. Autocrats have to win once. They don't necessarily need the majority of voters, but they need enough votes to get into those institutions and then they can change the system itself. They can ensure that this is something where they will stay in power. And we've seen that in Hungary. We've seen that in Poland. Poland is now trying to roll all these developments back with the new government in place, but they came very close to abolishing rule of law, all these principles, and the AFD and the, uh, the radicalized AFD that we're seeing now, if they indeed enter these democratic institutions, then they could change these, uh, these principles that we've agreed on. And I think what makes Germany so special, of course, is that we've seen it before. We've seen it happen in this country. And we've got Holocaust survivors who now, these days, you know, really old people who are saying this is exactly how it started at the time. How do you explain then, Katya, that in the country that says it learned from history, we are seeing high-ranking politicians and even important businesses even listening to these types of plans, re-migration, expelling thousands or millions of people out of the country? 
Well, I think it was Mark Twain who said that history doesn't repeat, but it often rhymes. And I think that that is the case here. So I don't think we're seeing an, an exact repeat of uh, the fall of the Weimar Republic and the rise of the of the Nazis. But some of the factors that underpinned that at the time um, we see again, and that is things like high inflation, a splintering of the political spectrum, um, a disaffection with mainstream politics, which are seen as kind of divisive and, and not able to solve the problems of the day, uh, the feeling that politicians are detached from the from the real problems of the people. All of these things, I think, combine into a similar sort of sense that whatever is the status quo isn't working and people are looking to quite sort of extreme um, solutions for, for that. And I think in that respect, there there is a similar situation. I think where things have changed is A, this awareness that Germany has of its own past. And I think this is what's sparking these mass demonstrations. Um, and also the fact that we have learned from the past in the sense that we have a different constitution now than we had in the Weimar Republic, one which is better able to, to defend itself with various uh, mechanisms that are currently being discussed. Um, in the extreme form, of a party ban is on the table and, and is being discussed, um, but also just things like... Um, you know, the, the fact that there is a, is a court that overlooks this entire system and, and looks at whether laws, for example, are constitutional, whether what the government that is once it's in power is doing is constitutional or not. So we have learned, I would say, in the sense that we have put these backstops in place that help us uh, defend the democracy that we've got now against uh, a kind of far right trends. And yet for a long time, people thought that uh, the most important political party uh, in the far right in Germany uh, would not really come into power. We will have a closer look at the AFD party and the AFD movement, because even before these protests, uh, Germany's biggest far right party had been uh, showing record performances in polls and in voter intention. And in the last few weeks, its support has barely declined despite social unrest. Björn Hücke is the state and parliamentary leader of the AFD in Thuringia, and he wants to create an ethnically pure Germany, literally. He wants to expel cultural foreigners by force if necessary. The AFD is currently polling at more than 30 percent, making it the strongest party in Thuringia. He could even become the state premier in the fall elections. Elections will also be held in Saxony and Brandenburg. The AFD is leading there as well. Currently, one in five people in Germany say they would vote for this party. Is it in spite of or because of nationalist ideas like Hücke's? According to the so-called Mitte study, 8% of Germans hold extreme right-wing views. Nearly a third of people surveyed would either prefer or are not opposed to an authoritarian government. And this is helping the AFD. By contrast, the popularity of the current governing parties has reached a historic low. The SPD, Greens and the FDP are constantly bickering. The self-proclaimed progressive coalition passes resolutions on ecological restructuring, the budget and social policy that require multiple corrections. And for many Germans, Chancellor Schultz has just been too quiet. How can the centrist parties win over voters again? That's a big question. Brandon, we know that this is happening in other countries as well. How difficult is it to fight a movement like the AFD when it has a message that clearly resonates with voters? I mean, that's, that's a very difficult question. I think when you look at this through an international lens, the Germany, the United States, there we tend to forget that we're, we're undergoing a major societal change, generational change. We have a green transition that's taking place. We have a digital transformation, new technologies, um, that provide opportunities, but also challenge economies. They they challenge our social fabric. And when you take uh, Germany into consideration, you also have a recession in this country. You have uh, a war just one border state away that has challenged Germany's post-war uh, foreign and security status quo. You have mass migration. The list goes on. When you take all of those, when you take those ingredients and you put them together, you put them into a pot and stir it, that is a, that's a dangerous concoction that could spill over. So, you know, the AFD is not as much a, a, a virus as it is a symptom of, of, of anxiety and dissatisfaction among the German populace. It really comes down to the, to the German government. And as was just described, um, if you look at polling, there is dissatisfaction in that regard. So that, that, is, that is really fertile ground that the AFD can use to, to really take advantage. 
And yet it seems like the AFD has this uh, irresistible message for some voters or this view of how Germany should look like, of who should be here. Nina, um, what are they doing right to attract so many people in Germany that, again, was supposed to have learned a lesson? Well, they're presenting simple solutions to very complex questions. And we are dealing with a situation where there are um, there's a multitude of crises that are overlapping, that are um, accelerating essentially each other. We've got inflation, we've got what Brendan just said, you know, Russia's war against Ukraine has challenged Germany's uh, foreign policies, but also very immediately the government needed to find new uh, sources of energy supply and had to run around the world, literally fly around the world to find new partners to get energy from because we were so heavily dependent on Russia. So all of this is extremely complex. The government ministers, they're traveling around the world also trying to attract people um, to come to work in Germany. And this is something um, where there is a lot of fear. It's happening at an incredibly high space, uh, uh, pace. And this is something where people do feel overwhelmed. So, of course, it's attractive when somebody says, you know, I'll tell you, we'll just kick them all out and, uh, you know, then we'll be left alone again. All the problems can stay outside of our borders. And that is, of course, not feasible. But you do have to say, so, you know, the government does consist of three very different political parties. That doesn't make it easier. There's constant bickering. They're not doing a very good job at presenting a sort of a steady face. They don't show unity. And this is also something where they're opening up this room for the opposition to criticise them and rightfully sometimes um, when it comes to decision-making, um, but also to radical extremists who just say, OK, they can't do their job properly. And we have to take a look at um, one of the most important discourses when it comes to the AFD, which is that it's a protest vote. Katya, uh, they say that uh, the success of the AFD is also the failure of the established uh, political parties. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you make of that, that people are willing to give their vote to the AFD despite all of what we're seeing just because they want to protest the current government? Well, I think that that is a valid point and a valid analysis, because uh, I think for a long time there's been a degree of complacency in the mainstream parties where they just assumed that that was never going to happen again. Uh, people would always vote for for the kind of centre ground, no matter how dissatisfied they may be with individual policies. Um, and I think that's um, now gone because of the success of the AFD and now the, the alarm bells are ringing. But I think, you know, the fact that, for instance, less fewer and fewer voters actually Actually turned up at elections for years that that figure the turnout has gone down that was just ignored and I think the AFD is for example able to get some of these non-voters back to vote for them and, and that's now uh, created I think a bit of a sense that it can't just be the case that you're arguing against the AFD um, you know I'd agree with this analysis that the AFD isn't isn't the virus but the symptom and in that respect one has to ask you know what the disease is in the first place and how one can can get to it and that can't happen without the mainstream parties also offering uh, some tangible solutions to problems that people can relate to and and will support it's not just about communication as is often claimed where people say oh if they just communicated their ideas and their solutions better it's also about what they are actually doing that doesn't speak to people at the moment in a democracy you can't just say well, but we're right, you know, we just need to convince you that we are. You also have to listen to, to these concerns by people because they are genuine concerns. And it seems like the AFD is uh, addressing them better. Now, if we take a look, let's just briefly take a look at the stance of the AFD, AFD on these revelations and on these protests. They say that the secret meeting was not a party event, Nina. They say that the revelations are from a partly government-funded organization that they and that they coincidentally came exactly at the time when the German government was seeing other mass protests or farmers' protests, rather, uh, that were um, uh, that were also very critical for the government. Uh, the AFD claims that this is an orchestrated defamation campaign, uh, including the media, of course, including us, maybe, uh, and supported by the media, and their voters seem to believe it. Yeah, but you could also see that the AFD leadership was shocked and Alice Weidel, uh, one of the uh, chair, well, the chairwoman of the AFD, um, 
she had to let go one of her closest um, member of staff because he attended it. And now we're seeing more revelations that there was somebody else who also has very clear links to the party itself and was paid with party funds uh, in the context of this secret meeting. So they are trying very much to portray this as something where they say, OK, people can go wherever they want in their free time. But there are close links that are being looked at now. But, I mean, there is a tendency. It doesn't matter how many times people said uh, Donald Trump has done something where he has to appear in court. His voter base then said, well, yeah, there's just an attempt to get rid of him. You know, yeah, everybody makes mistakes. And he, we've seen that in the US recently, right, Brendan? I mean, you're the expert there, but this is not something that will um, essentially tell people, OK, I'll better not vote for him again. And there is an element of that as well with the AFD voters. Do you see that parallel as well, Brandon, to the United States, for example, that no matter what happens, no matter what Trump says, no matter what these leaders do, they will continue to even gain support? Well, there, there is a particular reason you can buy his mugshot on cups and shirts yeah. and flags at Trump rallies. I mean, that tells you a lot. So, I mean, in, in the United States, we, of course, have this pivotal election later in the year. Donald Trump's name has been removed from two um, ballots. Two states have removed his name from the ballot. Um, which, which draws comparisons to calls to ban the AFD in Germany to a certain extent. Of course, one-to-one -one comparisons can get messy, but the, the, the root of this debate is essentially the individuals who have, who have put that action into place, they believe that they are securing democracy. They are using the, the legal instruments available through the Constitution to secure democracy. On the other side, if you look to conservatives, they believe this is, it couldn't get any more undemocratic by removing an removing a candidate from a ballot and taking the voice away from the American people. So it's, 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 it's a bit tricky. When you take another step back and you look at the, the way that Americans feel about this, um, it's, they're very divided. And as you would anticipate, they're divided along political lines. There is also the discussion, of course, of banning the AFD in Germany, as we just mentioned. Uh, Nina, what do you think is the status of that discussion? Uh, I've heard that it's not that realistic in the first place. It is extremely tricky and, uh, you know, for a reason. We don't want to make it easy for, uh, essentially, courts to ban political parties. We can't ban any party that, you know... We, we do have to have proper evidence in place that several things have to apply. First, the party does have to have the intention and in writing, I mean, you have to be able to completely link it to the party that really, if they came, did come to power, then they would challenge the very foundations of our system. And then also, we do have to prove that they do have enough of a voter base that is realistic that this could happen. So, you know, there have been attempts to ban a political party in Germany before, a far-right party, and that failed because they said the party is too, insig too yeah, insignificant. With the AFD, you can argue about the significance, of course, but how do you prove that they would really abolish, essentially, the foundations of our democratic system? And there is the big <clears throat> concern by experts who say, we have a legal case in place that could take years for the courts to decide, so it's not an immediate solution anyway. And what if this goes wrong? Mm -hmm. Then the AFD essentially has the stamp, we're a democratic party. Definitely, and that leaves us to, with the question, where do we go from here then? Katja, what do you think uh, the current political <clears throat> parties, the democratic par parties, should do in order to fight this off? Well, I think one thing they can do, and that is also uh, doable in the foreseeable future, is just to increase their presence on the ground uh, and, and make themselves more relatable, more accessible in that regard. I think this is one thing that the AFD does extremely well and that, that helps it, particularly yeah. in the East, actually, where there's a feeling of detachment with Berlin specifically. And, you know, people will tell you that I'm not voting for, um, say, Björn Höcke, the, the leader in Thuringia, or for Alice Weidel, the, the national leader, but I'm 
voting for Matthias, who is, you know, my local man who sits with me at the um, fire brigades meeting or whatever and, and talks to me about the issues that matter to me locally. And that is something the AFD have taken very seriously. They are there. They do listen to the to the discontent and, and are able to channel it in that way. And I don't think the um, uh, sort of mainstream parties have quite caught on to that yet. I think there is now also an understanding that social media matters, particularly with, with younger people. Again, this is something that the AFD is much, much more um, uh, sort of skilled in and, and they do use social media much more effectively than, than the traditional parties. And that has, has, I think, begun to sunk in and is now used more by um, by the by the centrist parties. Um, but those kinds of ideas, how do you get to people? Because that helps them understand what the issues are in the first place, I think. It's definitely a tricky situation, a difficult one for German politics these days. We That's all we have time for today, but of course the discussion continues also on our YouTube channel. Remember, you can also watch these shows on DW News on YouTube. I'm Javier Arguedas. Thank you so much to all our guests and to you for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care and goodbye.